Welcome. Hi. I'd like to welcome you to MOTC Training, Ministry Online Training Center. I'm Ollie Brown. I will be your pastor and instructor for the next hour as we study the Word of God in physical prosperity. Let us go before the Father in prayer. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, giving you glory and praise and thanksgiving for this day. This is the day you are made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Father, Father for the word going forth in power and might, all of you, Holy Spirit, and none of me. We give you all the glory and all the praise and all the thanksgiving for this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're going to talk about physical. There's all kind of prosperity. There's physical prosperity, soulish prosperity, prosper, prosperity in your relationships, prosperity of your soul, and we're we just going to touch today on physical prosperity because we're going to understand what's going on with the, our body. And God's told us, that are we going to be coming from John, uh, 3 John 1, 2. So would you like to turn to 3 John 1, 2, please? And it says, uh, while you turn to uh, 3 John verse uh, 1, we're going to talk about prosperity and having enough of God resources to fulfill his purpose for my life and God-given dreams. And true prosperity is the ability to use God's ability and power to meet the needs of mankind, regardless of what those needs may be. And God in the word in 3 John uh, uh, 1, 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So he wants us to prosper and be in health even as our soul. Our soul, what's our soul? Our soul is our mind, our will, our intellect. He said, I want you to prosper and be in health even as your mind, your will, and your intellect prosper. Prosperity does not only refer to financial or spiritual health, but it refers to the physical uh, health as well. If it refers to our bodies keeping well. It refers God wants our bodies well. God's will is that your body gets well and stay healthy. That's his will. After all, God called himself Jehovah Rapha to his covenant people in uh, Exodus. 1526, which means the Lord who heals you. And we all know that Jesus was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement, our peace was upon him by his stripes. We are the healed. We're not trying to get a healing. We are the healed. And in the enemy, the devil is trying to take our health. But we are the healed. We also walk in divine health. Jesus took every stripe upon his back, known, every disease known to mankind, he took for our health. 39 stripes. He took cancer. He took anything you could ever think of, anything man could come up with. He already took it on his back by his stripes, by the stripes on Jesus' back. We are the healed. So God wants us to walk in that divine healing at all times. And our job is not to confess anything other than what he's already done. It's finished. Jesus said, it's finished. So our thing is, okay, Lord, I am the healed. I am, I'm healthy. I'm healthy. And what does it mean to prosper in your soul? So we're going to go just, we, we're already in uh, Third John. Let's go down to verse 3 and 4. He says, I rejoice greatly when brothers come and testify the truth that is, is in you, just as you walk in truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. So his God is saying, he said, I, want, I have no greater joy than my children walking in truth. A prosperous soul is a mind filled with the truth. That's what a prosper my a soul is, a mind filled with truth. He said, my word is truth. My word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto my path. He said, my word is forever, la forever settled. My word is above my name. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word won't. He said, I want you to walk in that truth. If you continue in my word, you should know the truth, and truth will make you free. He said, if Five then by your truth. Your word is truth. So we know the truth. God said, when you get this truth inside, of your soul, it, it, your, uh, your, is your mind filled with the truth and your, uh, your soul prosper? A prosperous um, soul is, is a mind filled with God's word. So out of the abundance of heart, the mouth talk. So when we're full of God's word, we're full of God's truth, we're always talking about the word. We're always uh, acting up on the word. We'll speak the word. We'll uh, uh, live in the word. Continue in the word. A prosperous soul is a renewed mind. Your soul prosper, which means your mental will, uh, mind, will, and emotion prosper. It, it depends on 
How much are you going to renew your mind? And how much are you willing to grow in the things of God? Just as your soul prosper refers to the degree that your mind is renewed by, with the word of God. So our job is find out how, how, how much I'm, how deep I am I going to get into this water? How, how much of a washing of the word I'm going to live by? How much am I going to allow this word to get into my heart? So when you see your your body is not going to uh, 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 prosper, your uh, uh, your health is not going to prosper until your soul prosper, and your soul won't prosper until you renew your mind. It's like a circle. You go around this circle. So I mean, well, get into the circle. It gets a it's circular. If one depends on the other, God's greatest joy is to hear that his children walk in the truth of his word. Walking in the truth means walking in the light of God's word. So let's, let's turn to John 12, 35. Walking in the truth means walking in the light of God's word. John 12, 35 is Jesus speaking. Jesus answered, the light it will be among you for a little longer. He's talking about himself. Continue on your way while you have the light. So that the darkness will not come upon you. For the ones who walk in darkness, in dark, does not know where he's going. He said, believe in the light. Then while you have it, so you will be the people of the light. After Jesus said this, he went off and hid himself from men. And then John 1, 4 said, in him was life, and the light was the light of men. So Jesus said, yeah, I won't be with you a little, but a little longer. He said, continue uh, uh, while you have the light. Get it as much as you can. Jesus have told us he's the light of the world. In him was a light and life. And believe in the light. We have to believe in him. We have to believe in the word. We have to believe in Jesus. And it means practice the word of God. And so James 121, it says, let's turn to James 121. And we're going to read 121 through 125. So in order for our soul to prosper, we, we, we got to get rid of all immoral behavior and all wicked things we, uh, you do. Humbly accept the word that God has placed in you. Then engraft the word that it, as, as can save your soul. Some version says, then planted word. Some says engraft the word. Uh, uh, that, but God wants to accept that word that, that can save your soul. That means save your mind, your will, and your emotion. See, our mind and the will and emotion, when we was, when we was, uh, uh, when men, uh, Adam sinned against God, there are your, your, uh, the soul, be, the soul of, uh, of, uh, was be, get messed up. You get messed up, the, come, perverted uh, your soul. Your mind, your will, and emotion became perverted. And when we was born into this world with no hope and no God, alienated from the land of promise, and we became, and we, we received Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We have to work out, we have to get that engrafted word, and planted word, God's word, to grow us up and mature us, mature our soul, our soul, our mind, our will, and emotions. And you're never going to grow, if, if, you're never going to grow as you should, unless you renew your mind in the things of God. So he says, the engrafted word who can, can save your soul. Do in uh, James 1:22, he says, "Do what God's word says. Don't merely just listen to it. You, you will fool yourself. If someone listens to the, uh, God's word but doesn't do what it says, he's like a person who looks at a, his face in a mirror, studies his features, goes away, and immediately forgets what he look like." You get in this word of God, you, 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 uh, 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 if you don't do what the word of God says, you're just going to see your reflections, but you forget who you really look like. Who do you look like? We're supposed to be looking at, look like Jesus. However, the person who continues to study God's perfect teaching that makes people free and who remain committed to them will be blessed. People like that don't really listen and forget they can actually do what God's teaching says. So God wants us to uh, uh, get, get this word and continue to do this word. You, you, will, you will actually do what the teaching says. That's called, re that's all, another form of, of renewing your mind. It means living according to, uh, according to the success principle set forth in the word of God. James, John 8, 31 and 8, 32 says, Jesus said to those Jews who believe on him, if you continue my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you know a disciple is a learned one. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will liberate you. The truth will make you free. God's word. Back to God's word. So the, the truth is, by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. We walk in divine health. The truth is, 
We, 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 uh, uh, sickness and disease don't have no authority over us, no power over us, unless we allow it to have power over us. And the truth is, everything is finished. It's all been finished. Everything is, we, we're supposed to prosper in our physical body. Our body is supposed to be healthy, whole, well, because of the price Jesus paid. Uh, Hebrews 4.12, it says, the word is alive powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It is divided, it divides the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What the word? What the word is alive? You mean, a, I'm looking at this word, guess what? This word is looking at me. Because the word is alive. You're looking at the word and trying to figure out what the word is saying and, and the word says, it's, it's, it's looking at your heart and the discerner of the thoughts and intents of your heart. So as we study this word, we got to remember this word lives and it's supposed to live on the inside of us. And it's supposed to be alive and it, it, it's, it's, it's divine, divine, discerning the thoughts and intents of our heart. And we'll know what's in our heart because out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth's going to tell us what we think. Mm -hmm. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. So whatever person is talking about, that's in their heart. Whatever person, when you, whatever person is letting control them, that's in their heart. What they, if they're always talking about the football game, football game, football game, that's in their heart. They're always talking about women, 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 that's in their heart. If you're always talking about Jesus, 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 that's in your heart. Mm -hmm. It's in your heart. Well, look, some people say, that's the only time she comes around, that's all she talk about. What else to talk about? There's nothing else to talk about. <laughs> because it's in my heart. I have a couple of my children, one of my children, won't mention no name, he said, I just want you to talk to me, mama. I just want you to talk to me. <laughs> You're always talking to me about, about, about the word. Just, I want you to want to be my mama. And I'm going, I am your, I am your mama. <laughs> What else am I going to tell you? you I, I'm not going to be like the people who say, lie to me. Lie to me. The children of Israel, I'm not going to say, lie. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to give you the truth. I'm going to give you the, what the word of God says. You ask me a question. You ask me, what you think I should do? I'm going to give you the truth according to not my opinion, but unless in my opinion line up with God's word. I'm going to give you what the word says. They say, so he said, you continue in my word. You should know the truth, and the truth will make you free. See, we're supposed to be the most liberated freest people on the planet. Nothing is supposed to hold us in bondage. Nothing is supposed to hold us down because we got the word of life. We got the word of truth. Where is it? It's in my heart. It's in my heart. And it's coming out of my mouth. And whatever situation we're going through, and, and I heal it, if they, whatever situation you're going through in your body, God say, you got the word. You got the, you, got the, you got the truth. Speak to it. Speak to your body. Your body, see, your body is supposed to obey the word of God. You know, if your hand got pain in it, you don't just say, oh, Lord, my hand got pain. No, Jesus paid his price in his hand. He paid the price for the pain. Authorized, you're a lie. You are an absolute lie. You're not going to ride me. I'm going to speak to the authorized and command authorized to loose this grip on my own hand because my hand is fearfully and wonderfully made because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. The word of God is alive. Do you know the word? Of, and when the word of God is alive, it, 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 it absolutely lights you up. If you start speaking the truth, you start speaking what God says about every situation, especially in, because the enemy want to come in and try to rip you off in your health. To rip you off and to get you focused on you. No, 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 no. I'm going to focus on him. I'm going to focus on God. I'm going to focus on the word because the word is alive. <laughs> That's a river. It's almost a when you it's it, 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 it's it's discerning the thoughts and intents of our heart. So God wants us to God wants us to keep this word in us and remember what Jesus did. Remember what uh, uh, we cannot suffer prosperity in a physical or mental realm only, just as we cannot suffer for spiritual prosperity alone. We can't afford to be lazy in this uh, uh, to discount physical and mental prosperity simply because we are saved and filled with the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit. God wants us to speak this word, to live this word. God, want, God wants to remember what he's done. He also want to remember it is finished. First Thessalonians 5.23. God wants us to remember that we are spirit, soul, and body. It is God's will for us to be made whole. Say what? It is God's will for us to be made whole. Spirit, soul, and body. He wants our body to be whole, healed, and delivered from any sickness, any disease, anything, any addiction, anything that's going to hold us in bondage. He said, be kept that way until the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
He says, God will us to be made whole, spirit, soul, and body. That's who we are. We're spirit, soul, and body. Our spirit man is made in the image and the likeness of God. Well, how do you know that? Genesis, I'm glad you asked that. Genesis 1:26. he says, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let him have dominion upon everything upon the earth. And let him rule and reign upon the earth. Our soul, it said, our, our soul, is, and then he said, in, 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 in First John uh, uh, 4, 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So, and then in our body is a, is a temple of God. He said, I want to keep that body, in, I, want, I, want, I want to keep that, that body be kept until uh, uh, the return of our Lord Jesus. He said, beloved, I wish above all things you may prosper, being here even as your soul prosper. Because see, Jesus took the, he, he took everything, he did everything upon the cross for us. First Peter 2.24 says, Who, whom his own self bear our sin in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by those whom, whose strife we were healed. But he, he's the strife. We, we, we are healed. See, it's already, it's, it's a done deal. We are healed. Sickness and disease do not have an illegal right to, to attack our body. It doesn't have a legal right. But we got an enemy in the earth who's illegal. And he'll, he'll suggest some things. But you know, you'll give voice to it if you'll be not mindful of what's going on. You'll, get, you'll be able to have a pain in your knee. You'll be walking down a pain in your knee. And he'll say, hey, that's bursitis. Mm -hmm. I ain't no bird. I cast that lie down. That's a, I ain't got no bird. I got healing in my leg. I got healing in my knee. And you walk a little further, and he'll say, hey, that's arthritis. Mm -hmm. This is a lie from hell. I, I, no, I got healing in my knee. I got healing in my knee. And then you go, somebody come along later on, one of your grandkids or kids to come along and say, uh, what's wrong, mama? Oh, what's wrong? Uh, I'm, I'm fine. See, you, 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 you look like you got, uh, 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 you're limping. That's, I'm fine. I'm healed. Oh, it must be bursitis. Mm -hmm. Then you say, that might be what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff named it. It might be bursitis. Yeah? Now you got two, uh, two or more touching the green. Yeah, you fought the first two. You fought it real good, but the third one got you. And see, you gotta be, because he's crafty. He deceived, all, Satan deceived the whole world, and he'll deceive you, and out of your mouth, got death and life is in the power of your tongue, and you just spoke some death to your life, instead of remembering what the king has done. Remember what Jesus has done. He's already paid the price. It is a finish. It's a done deal. I don't care how much it comes, I still got the truth. It's in my mouth. The word of God is coming out of my mouth. I'm gonna say what the king said. What did he say? I'm healed. I'm healed in Jesus' name. I got a, my, my body been blood washed and blood bought. No weapon formed against me with prosper. Devil is a lie. He's defeated. And as the truth is, I am the heal. I ain't trying to get a healing. I am the heal. The devil trying to take your health. And we as the children of God, as New Testament saints, and Testament ministers, we have to stand. Stand in his word. Stand, I stand in his word. But above all, stand on what he says, what the truth is. He said, my word is truth. My word is life. The word is alive. So we, we don't have to receive that lie. The attack can come. The attack comes. But we, don't, we are the people who have ability and power and might to not receive the lie. The lie will come. But I don't have to receive a lie. That's not who I am. I don't care if because by God's grace we are saved, not by works, by grace. Even if we call in anything, if it comes from the enemy, it's still a lie. Because the truth is, uh, uh, Jesus got, took all our sins, all our sickness, all our diseases. Everything was put up on him. So I don't have to receive that, what the enemy or anybody else say. If you're not for me, you can be against me. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 53, 2 says, this is Jesus. He was beaten to a pup. See, that's why. When you think about how great he is and how good he is and how much he loved us, we can receive this truth and walk in it. He was beaten to a pup, crushed, until his face looked like jelly hanging out. Now, you don't even want to picture that, but you're going to picture that. Because he did it for our healing. He did it for our welfare. He did it for our benefit. 
They cut Psalms 129.3. They cut deep wounds in his back and made it look like a uh, a power, power field. You know how a field looks when they, I mean, all lines going down it? Psalm 22, 17. I can count all my bones and my enemy just stared and, sneer, and sneered at me. His bones were exposed. What came on him was not just a whip striping, uh, stripping the flesh off of his bare back, but your sickness, my sickness, and diseases, all of them. Each time he was whipped, every form of sickness and disease, including arthritis, cancer, diabetes, blood, uh, uh, bird flu, any, any, any of those names, anything that came up, anything that's named as a sickness disease, they, uh, any other kind of sickness disease, disease came up on him. That's why we can say Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, by his stripes, we are the healed. 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 We, are the, we have a right to healing because Jesus has paid the price for our healing. Disease has no right to be, our, be in our bodies. Every curse, of, every curse of sickness that was supposed to fall on you and me fell on Jesus. That's why we can praise him. That's why we can glorify him. That's why we don't have to worry about our bodies as a whole. He said he want our bodies whole to walk in wholeness. Luke 5, 31. And Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are sound or well do not need a physician. But those who are sick, I did not come to call the righteous to repent, but the sinner. He said, I'm the great physician. Now, I'm the great. Now, I don't have anything problem with people going to the doctors because see, God can move through doctors. Penicillin, if penicillin will cure, heal everybody, why everybody need penicillin with pneumonia? Don't, uh, 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 why don't they live? Penicillin is the, it's Jesus. It's always Jesus. Okay. <laughs> he works through penicillin. It's always Jesus. He works through the doc He works through the doctors. He gave them the knowledge. It's always, but it's not Jesus plus anything. It's Jesus. That's why we are whole. That's why we heal. That's why we anything. It's Jesus is the source of everything. He's the source of our needs. He's a, he's the source of every. He's 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 he meet our needs. He's the source of our peace. He's the source of our joy. He's the source of everything. Our sound is a mind. He was. He's everything. So he said, I came for you to have life, and that life more abundantly. He said, yeah, I he told us, he said, uh, Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart does good like a medicine, but with a broken spirit dries the bones. A merry heart, a person who's lighthearted and joyful. He said, uh, 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 in another, another, another one, he says, Proverbs 17, 22, he says, merry heart uh, 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 is a cure, it's a heal, it's a healing. But a broken spirit dries the bone. When a person is depressed and uh, sorrowful and pitiful and, and always negative, it, 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 his spirit is like a dry bones. But a, a merry heart is like medicine. That's why we want to make sure. Uh, see, when you serve a, and get to know this, this, this God of the Bible, Jesus, and, and the Lord of your life, the one that loves you and know how much he loves you, your heart going to be merry. If you get to know him and know how, how much he paid the price for us to be free, our heart is happy. Happy is a man who trusts in the Lord. I, you're happy. You're joyful. You're, you're full of energy. You're ready to go, you're ready to go, somewhere, do, go someplace and do something that, uh, positive, and do something that's going to glorify God because you're joyful. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You have more strength than you need because the joy of the Lord, not you, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy, the joy of the Lord keeps you going. The joy of the Lord keeps you moving. And the joy comes from knowing him and knowing he's good and knowing he's great and knowing he's for you and not against you and knowing he came for you and he came for you to have that life. He came for you to have that abundant life. He came for you to have healing in your body. He came for you, for you to have everything, all your needs are met. That's why you can praise him and rejoice in him. You should be cheerful and happy no matter what the circumstances. Say what? It will, be, it will definitely be a contributing factor to your prosperity and your health. A lot of people don't believe that. No, they don't believe. They believe. They don't believe. Uh, 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 
are cheerful and ex because see when you know who he is and get to know him and know the price he's paid for us to have life you're grateful and thankful and your body reacts to that your mind reacts to that your spirit man is always poised and excited about God. It's always ready to, to go out and do what God says do. But this body, you got to die and drag it along. It does, I mean, you got to, you got to, you remind you of them cartoons <laughs> on TV. You can knock somebody over and drag them. A dead man. They just do the body. You gotta make your body. You gotta make your body obey God's word. And you gotta speak to your body and tell your body you're not sick. Because sometimes people want a pity party. They wanna, and, and you, if you know God has already paid the price for your healing, why are we gonna glory in, 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 in telling our stories? Why are we gonna glory in sickness? Somebody says, uh, uh, let me tell you what, girl, I'm, I'm so sick. I, I, I'm so, this thing happened to me. But let me tell you what happened to me. You know, your, your story. And they get to bragging on how sick they are. How sick they been, and what kind of disease they had, and what kind? Of, no, if you're gonna boast, you boast in the Lord. You boast in the things of God and what He's done, not what your body is trying to act like. Many times I tell people to cheer up and stop worrying about nothing. About 99% of the time, uh, the, the time, they the things they're worrying about never happen. That's how the that enemy comes in. He gives you the thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. He bombards your minds with things you should worry about, things about your body. You make wake up in the middle of the night, and he'll lie to you about something on your heart. Boom, 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 boom. My heart ain't beating right. Boom, boom. And he'll say, "Listen, it ain't beating right." And you wake up real good. Now listen to your heart. And you start. And if you're gonna cast down imagination, you start listening to the. And it would sound like your heart beating. You never. Speak. Your head. Shut up. Your head starts shaking, and you start sweating. No, in the name of Jesus, I am the healed. I have a healing in my body. My body. You must get in line with God's word. I'm gonna speak to my body. My heart. I don't, God gave me a brand new heart. I got a brand new heart. I remember about 15 years ago, my heart was boom, boom. <laughs> he don't waste nothing. Nothing. And I went to the doctor, and the God, and I was terrified. And the doctor, the, 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 the devil was saying, oh, your, your heart, you, you, know, you, you have a bad heart. And uh, they, gonna, they put, hooked me to this machine, and I forgot to test. And I was, and the Lord kept saying, Look, you gotta, you, your heart is perfect, your heart is fine, everything is right, everything's good. I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. But I still had this fear. Fear has torment. And I was just afraid. I was afraid. And God said, your heart is fine. So when, when, they, when everything came out, he said, your heart is fine. And, uh, and I said, thank you, Lord. But I, I, I didn't, I had a little information, but I was growing. See, that's what renewing your mind means. You have a little information today, but you don't have to stay that little information. You get to keep eating that word and keep eating that word and keep feeding up on that word and studying that word and get that word in your heart and look at and you keep looking at Jesus and you keep looking at I'm always looking at him now. I look I see him everywhere. I see him in the scriptures. I see him in people's life. I see him. I, I choose to see him because he's always been there. Because a lot of times we've been so busy looking at the circumstances of what's going on in our life, we can't see Jesus. But when you start renewing your mind and falling in love with the things of God and knowing how much he loves us, boy, you see Jesus everywhere. You see Jesus on TV. They be hollering. They be running and, and scared. They say, in the name of Jesus, hey, I'm talking to the TV set now. I'm... <laughs> You know what? It gets good to you. Many people, they want, us, they want to be in this situation. They want to be in all that. But God wants us not to worry about anything. If you worry about it to the point where you're fear, fearful and terrified, God said, God said he didn't give you that spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind. He didn't give you that. So fear is a spirit. And guess where that spirit come from? It come from Satan. It come from him. And he wants to get you to not trust God and not to believe God is good and not to believe God is for you. The word of God says, if God is for you, who can be against you? Who can? So God is for me. He got, uh, Jesus did the, uh, 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 First Peter 2, 4 again, clearly stated that Jesus paid the full legal price for man's sin and, the, and not only man's sin, but the consequences of sin. He paid the full price for man's sin and the consequences of sin. Hebrews 9, 12 says, 
neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once in the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. He descended into hell and sometime between the resurrection and his appearance to Mary in his resurrection, uh, 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 resurrected body, he preached to the uh, imprisoned spirits. First Peter 3.19, by which he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison. He legally broke the chains of authority and the powers of Satan. He legally broke the chain of authority and the power. That chain of authority, that, that's the authority that Adam gave the way back in the Garden of Eden right. when he sinned against God. He brought, he brought back what Adam legally transferred to, to the adversary. He got it back. Since the time of Jesus' resurrection and the giving of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, Satan's power and demeanor over men has been broken. We are not under his authority. We're not under his power. We have the power over the enemy. There is absolutely no control whatsoever that the adversary has or legal hold over any saved man. He don't have no power or authority over us. Most Christians believe and are not aware of this truth, and we are here to make this truth known to you, that God asks you to do it is to believe in his word. All God asks you to do is to believe in his word. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, and all the promises, all God's promises are yes and amen. All of them are yes and amen to the glory of God. All of them are available. Every promise God made to us is real. They're, they're precious promises. Everything God's made is so be it. There's no if, if, there's no gray area in God's word. You should make every effort to study God's word. Do not uh, depend on the teachers of, uh, 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 teachers of other teachers alone. We, we posted, God told us to study to show us approved. He also told us to submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Flee, run as in terror. He said, resist the devil, he will flee. He's given us, he told us, he said, uh, 2 Corinthians, this, I love this scripture. 2 Corinthians 5, well, I love a lot of them, 5.21. For he, God, has made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus knew no sin. He took all of our sins. All mean all. Our what? Our past, our present, and our future sins upon himself. God made Jesus to be the sin for us who knew no sin. He took sin upon himself so that we might be made the righteous of God in Jesus Christ. All that Adam lost in the fall, Christ regained for us once and for all. And he said, it is finished. We, we, so we never have to be sick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we should never, ever confess to a negative, especially in the er areas of our health. A negative is, I got this, or this is uh, my author, or my back, or my, this is my, we never confess a negative, never confess what the enemy or what the body is doing. The body is what the body is trying to do. We know the body is warring against you, your body is your enemy, and you, you can never confess that. Never. I don't care what it looked like. I'm the heel. I'm not trying to. I am the heel. I don't care what it feels like, what it looks like. I don't care how you sound. Or what's going on? How you bend over? How you straighten up? I am the heel. I am the heel. There. I mean, I am the heel. I am. I am the heel. I glorify God in my body because I am the heel. God is. God has healed me by His stripes. And that's. And that's it. And that's all. I'm not, I'm not going to go no further. That's it and that's all. The only way you, that, uh, that you, uh, you are going to prove to yourself that the word of God is true is to renew your mind to, the, to his word by your own free will. You know, it's not a, there's nobody going to make you. You don't have to be condemnation over it. Therefore, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. You do this as a free will. I will to study. I will to get to know this God of the Bible. I will get to know my personal Lord and Savior. I will get to know his, 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 his character, his integrity, all about him. I will to do this. I want to know. I want to know him. 
I want to know him personally. It says, uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a work with that mean not ashamed, right and divide in the word of truth. Either you do what the scriptures say, you, uh, either, either you do what the scriptures say you are to do, or nothing, nothing happens. In other words, God is not going to make me study. God is not going to make me do anything. Anything. We need to, if we're going to talk the talk, we need to walk the walk. We're going to get up and grow up. No more babies, no more children, no more uh, bottle feeders, no more problem eaters, no more <laughs> diaper wetters. <laughs> No more tampering, going temper and tamper. We don't want to be those people. Don't, we don't want to show up as a people who are bathed from the time they, they've been in the Word 50 years and they bathe, and when they go home to be the glory, to glory, they're still babes. No more. The, the thing, you see, when a babe, a babe is going to do the same thing over and over. Babies are very selfish and demanding, and, and the natural a babe is going to throw fits and temper and tantrums and, and never grow up to know this, this wonderful God, this wonderful Savior, this wonderful Lord. We are, we are, we're going to get into this word and study to, so, uh, to be teachers. To get into this word. James 3.16. We don't want a... Uh, 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 we don't want to be uh, speaking uh, misery. Misery loves company. We don't want to be sad, sorrowful people always complaining and uh, complaining and complaining and complaining about their circumstances and situation when God has given us authority over our situation. He told us, what he told us to do about our situation? Didn't he tell us in Mark, uh, 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 20, what is that? Mark 11:24. He told us, did he tell us to speak to our circumstances? I believe he did. But I'm going to turn to Mark. I bet you all know that scripture by heart. I bet you know him. Mark 11, 24. Mm -hmm. Say to this mountain, be not removed and not die in the heart, but believe those things that come and pass, and we'll have what so we say. Something similar to that, but I'm going to read it. Because I think I'm skipping something. This way I will make sure. It says um, 23, no, it says it's 22. It says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. For I say unto you that whosoever say unto this mountain, be, uh, you, uh, be thy removed and be thy cast in the sea and shall not doubt in their heart, but shall believe those things which he have said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. I say I'm healed. Therefore I say unto you, Whatsoever thing that you desire when you pray, believe you receive it, you shall have them. I have healing in my, I, have, I am the heal. So he's given us a power to speak over our circumstances and the power of death and life is in the power of our tongue. The good news is life is in the power of our tongue. We can speak life to our life. Col Colossians, I mean James 3.16. For wherever evil and strife is, confusion, turmoil, and every evil work. That's why God don't want us to be uh, having a, 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 a strife and confusion about anything. We don't want, he don't want us to be in that position. Colossians 3.25. But he that does wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done. And there is no, God has no respect to person. If you are a miserable person, you know if your thoughts thoughts are, are godly or evil, get back in fellowship with God. God is not, see, God loves us. God is not going to, God, God, God is going to get you. God, God loves us. He said, if we, we, if we found out we've been saying the wrong things about our bodies or saying the wrong things about anything, just get back in line with God. Thank you, Lord. I, I thank you, Lord, you paid the price for me. I thank you, Lord, you love me. I, I, I praise you, Lord, for your love. I thank you, Father God, that, that you uh, love me just as much as you love Jesus. That was awesome to me. God loved us just as much as he loved Jesus. So we want to, uh, uh, we know we're in a warfare. We know we're in a, we, we, uh, the Bible tells us we're in a warfare. He also told us, the Bible said we are God's workmanship, created for good works. So let's turn to Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship, masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has, God has before ordained that we should walk in. 
Now, if this is true, which it is, then we should be able to believe to have prosperity and help. Confess what the Word says, not what the doctor says, not what your friend says, not what your body says, especially what your body says, not what your body says, and not what your uh, uh, mind says if your mind is not in line with God's Word. Because we know we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But principalities and spiritual weakness in heavenly places. We, you know, we in this situation where we're not wrestling. Ephesians six twelve says, "For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in heavenly places." We, that's why we have to keep on our armor. Keep on our armor. We can't, can't, we can't be caught without it. Ephesians six twelve. We don't wait. We not walk or wrestling against flesh and blood. It says, uh, "It says, therefore, thirteen. Therefore, put on God's complete armor, that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day." of danger and having done all the critics demand to stand firmly in your place stand there for a hold your ground having tight the belt of truth around your loins and having put on the breastplate of integrity of your moral uh, uh, moral and right standing with God having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm footed stability and, and promptness and the readiness it produced by good news of the gospel of peace. It says, that, and above all, taking the shield of faith, where, uh, where with you will, uh, you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying all, always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So this is what this is our stand. I, we stand as a ready soldier, as a ready soldier with power and authority and might, as a ready soldier stand against the wiles of the devil. We don't have to whatever the, whatever comes out the devil's mouth is lies. He's the father of lies, and there's no truth in him. So we don't have to believe the lies. There's no truth in him. Whatever he says, God told us in, in James four seven, submit yourself un, uh, therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will run in terror from you. Run. That's why no matter what goes on, there, there is no condemnation for us. We don't have to walk in condemnation about anything. That's why when I concern God's word, we are holy people. We have been set apart. Condem no, Romans 8.1 says, Therefore there is now no con condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation when Christ Jesus. Condem condemnation is sin. Be sure to get right back in fellowship if you, uh, if you feel you're condemnated. You don't have to receive that lie. It's another lie. There's no condemnation. Many times it is fear that stops a person from believing, a, believing for good health or prosperity of any kind. Remember, fear is not from God. It is from Satan. Uh, 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 it's, a, it, it's a devil spirit. You, you should know by now that darkness cannot stand light. And guess what? We're the light of the world. We're the light of the world. And, God, and so God, it, uh, uh, when, when you're going through in your body, you are the heal, prosperous, and God wants to walk in prosperity of our bodies. God like, for God, God, uh, he told us, he said, um, Philippians 2.21, for all seek their own, but not the things which are Jesus Christ. God, we want to seek him first in his righteousness and knowing all things to be added unto us. God cares for our bodies. I want you to tell you uh, uh, Second Chronicles 6, 12, 6, 16, 12, just turn to that. Um, in the third, 39 year that Isra was king, he was crippled by a severe foot disease. But even then, he did not turn to the Lord for help, but to the doctors. 
God may use doctors and medicine, even in surgery, to, to, to uh, heal us. But we cannot di uh, dictate to him what he's going to use. He works through the doctors. He works through them, but he is the healer. The one I like is the one over here, the example uh, um, on Mark 525. But the lady with, I know we go over this lady with the issue of blood, but it's a powerful, it's powerful. A certain woman who had an issue of blood 12 years and has suffered many things of many physicians and has spent all that she had and, and, and had not been better, but rather grew worse. Now this is the part, having heard about Jesus. What do faith come by? It come by hearing, by hearing the word of God. Having heard about Jesus, she came and pressed behind him and touched his garment. She said, if I might touch only his clothes, I will be healed. Now, she, faith without works is, not, is, is, is dead. She moved, her faith had feet. She had to leave her comfort of her house in the condition she was in in those days that had stoned her on sight. But she didn't consider what people thought about her. She didn't consider her circumstances. She, could see, she saw the word. She looked at, she saw Jesus. And she said she heard. How can I hear without a preacher? She heard about him. And she moved. And she kept moving until she got what she, she kept moving until she got what she needed. And we're not supposed to stand still. We're going to get what we, we're going to receive what we need. See, it's already there. It's God, Jesus says, it's finished. But as for people, we need to receive. Be a, a receiver. A believer of what he says. Here are three glorious truths that the Bible teaches concerning our bodies. One, the body is for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. Two, our bodies are members of Christ. Three, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to go to uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6.13. And we're going to read to 6.20. 1 Corinthians 6.13. It says, food is for the stomach, and the stomach is for food. But God will put an end to both of them. However, the body is not for sex or sin, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord by his power. God will always raise us. Don't you realize that your body a part of, of Christ's body? Should I take the part of Christ's body and make them a part of a prostitute's body? That's unthinkable. Don't you realize that the person who, uh, who unites himself with a prostitute become one body with her? God says the two will, will be one. However, the person who unites himself with the Lord become one with the uh, uh, one spirit with him. Stay away from sexual sin. Other sins that people commit don't affect their body the same way sexual sins do. People who see, uh, sin sexual sin against their own body. Don't you know that your body is a temple that belongs to the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit whom you receive from God lives in you. You don't belong to yourself. You were brought for a price. So bring glory to God in the way you use your body. God said our bodies are fearful and one feet made. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. The Holy Spirit, once you be born, born again, he, he takes residence inside of us. That's why you can say great is he that's in us and he is the world. So we have the Holy Spirit in our bodies. The Holy Spirit live with us. We, we now have to, draw, where is God? He's inside. He's in me. He lives in me. Uh, 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 let me see. Some people, when they when they uh, get into things of God, they wanna they wanna do all you know. You get zeal, and zest, and zeal, and you energy, and you wanna go out and you wanna preach to the whole world, which is good. And people they have seven days a week, and they run in to do the things of God five, six, or seven days a week. And they get they they burn their bodies to the point where they're so tired all the time. 
And God wants us to rest. He don't want us to just run, 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 run without resting. These bodies are supposed to get some rest. They're supposed to, they're not, they're not supposed to be 24-7 every day. So, you know, God, God wants to uh, take care of our bodies, nourish our bodies with the proper food, with the proper rest. Just, 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 not just, just don't go on and on, on and on like some kind of machine. That, 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 that ever ready, uh, energized buddy. <laughs> go on and on and on. <laughs> he wants us to uh, uh, use wisdom in his body. Take care of our body. Get some rest. Don't, you know, uh, allow ourselves to uh, uh, lay down and, and, and meditate with him. Sometimes just, just rest. It says, um, Mark 6.31, so he said to them, let's go to the place where we can be alone to rest for a while. This is Jesus. Many people were coming and going, and Jesus and the apostles didn't even have a chance to eat. So he said, let's go. Jesus went away. Sometimes he disappeared in the crowd. He went around and he rest. So we as physical people, we are physical we are spirit, but we live in this physical body. This body actually is a vehicle that houses our spirit, that takes our spirit from A to Z. But this is our vehicle, our body, is, this, our spirit man, that's who we are. We have to have a way to move around. So this body, we need to take care of it so our spirit man have a vehicle to move, some kind of transportation. So we're going to get our proper rest. We're going to get our nourishment. And Jesus told us in Matthew 11, 20, he says, Come to me all who are tired and carry heavy loads, and I'll give you rest. So if you're tired and having heavy loads, lay, you know, he said, catch all your cares on him because he cares for you. Don't be trying to overload yourself with all these tasks. You got all, you got I mean, every hour is filled with, I'm working for the Lord. I'm working for the Lord. God didn't say work for the Lord. He said work with me. Like work with me. Because we're going to do this together. Don't burn, your, don't burn yourself. Take care of his temple. The body. Take care of it. So you can, you can uh, do his will up on the earth. Until you can have your rest. Get some good sleep. He said, he told, he told, what's that scripture, Pastor always saying? The sweet sleep of the righteous. The righteous is supposed to have sweet sleep, restful sleep, knockout sleep. So why? So you can glorify God in your body so you can be fit and well equipped for the next day task. We got a... Um, 1 Corinthians, this is the last one, 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Surely you know that many runners take part in a race, but only one of them wins the prize. Run, then, in such a way to win, to win the prize. Every athlete is trained, training, submits to strict discipline in order to be crowned with, the, with a wealth that, is, that will not last. But we do it for the one that will last forever. That is why I run straight for the finish line. That is why I am like a boxer who does not waste his punches. I harden my body with blows and bring it under complete control to keep myself from being disqualified, having called others to the contest. Just keep your body strong. Remember, Jesus you are the heal. Jesus heal you. You're not the one that's trying to get the healing. You are the heal. Say, I am the heal. I am the heal. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Okay, we're gonna have a re, uh, we're gonna have a paper, uh, response paper. What I learned, what I'm gonna do, and what I learned. Walk in the blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>